Hey, welcome to Beyond Film School, where we discuss everything film related. I'm Amber, and in this video, we are talking about film school, whether or not it's right for you, and if you even need it. Spoiler alert, you don't. Before we jump into all that is film schools, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all the videos I make on the film industry. And if you want to support Beyond Film School, hit that PayPal link. You can donate or you can buy some Beyond Film School merch. That link is below. Hit up beyondfilmschool.com for Beyond Film School merch. So film school. I get asked about film school often and whether or not it's worth it. My blanket answer, because I'm a poor girl from the east side of Buffalo, is that no, it's not worth it. Nope, 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 nope. Let's start with what film school is. Actually, let's start with what film school is not. If you went to a four year college, an undergrad college, you took a, fil a few film classes, that to me is not film school. For me, film school is an MFA, Master of Fine Arts program, where you're doing nothing but film classes. Everything that you're doing, your curriculum revolves around filmmaking. That's film school. Film school to me is a very expensive, safe space where you get to make content with other folks. You hopefully network and find people you wanna work with. You hopefully get appropriate feedback from your peers on the things you create. And you'll possibly have instructors and mentors to guide you through this whole process. Now, if you ask me, that's a lot of hoping and a lot of expensive, expensive hoping. So I've said expensive probably way too many times in the last minute or whatever, how much time has passed since this video started. So let's just take a look at the numbers of the film schools from the top film schools around the world. The Australia Film, TV and Radio School. This is a two year school. Each year is about 52,000 Australian dollars, which is about 37,000 US dollars. International students can look to pay about 94,000 Australian dollars, which equals about 68,000 US dollars. Next up is the Toronto Film School. The Toronto Film School has an 18 month program with it costing about 35,000 Canadian dollars, which is about 28,000 US dollars. International students can expect to pay about 53,000 Canadian dollars, which is about 43,000 US dollars. London Film School, the London Film School is a two year film school. The total cost for the whole program is about 60,000 pounds and that's about 82,000 US dollars. There was only one K difference between international students and domestic students, so it's just about the same for both those programs, if international and domestic for their film program. Now, with France, their top film school impressed me because they're nonprofit. Les Femmes, Les Femmes, I have no idea how to say French words. It's so embarrassing, oh my God. Uh, they're actually a four year school, and I'm pretty sure it is free for French citizens, but international students who are trying to get into this program, it's about $9,000 in US dollars per year, but it's also one of the hardest schools to get into. And we're ending with the US with USC who kept coming out on top of all of the film lists I looked into. And this is a three year school you can expect to pay 36,000 a year. Producing program is 54,000 a year. And this is the same for international students. Just from that glimpse of film schools, if you're feeling a little despair, don't worry because you don't need film school to have a film career. You don't, you don't need film school. Oh, um, you wanna be a writer, but you don't know how to write a script. So you're going to take your favorite movie and you're going to read that script. Now, simplyscripts.com, simplyscripts.com, you can look up your favorite movie and they have the script there, ready to download for free. It's a PDF and reading your favorite movie scripts is going to make you a better writer. So do that first and foremost. And if you're worried about story structure, read some books about script writing. I recommend Screenwriting by Sid Field. It is a $15 book on Amazon. I definitely get it. It is like a very good starting point for how to write scripts. Watch YouTube videos about script writing. Next, what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna join writing groups on Facebook, okay? Or any writing groups, there's a ton out there. Script writing groups are all over the place. Join those groups, read some of your pages, and get feedback from people. Matter of fact, read your pages to pretty much anybody because 
anybody is an audience, if you think about it, they'll let you know what they like, what they dislike, what works, what made sense. Your average everyday person is gonna be like, well, that didn't make sense, or I didn't understand that, or whatever. And that's what you want. You want people to be like, what? Or that's great, or maybe that sucked. Read it to anybody. Read your pages to anybody to get feedback. So that took care of the writing portion of filmmaking. Don't know how to produce? Start as a PA, get on anything, volunteer your time, get on set, start watching everything happen. Be there, fly on the wall, watch, observe, watch everything happen, and then you'll start figuring out all the things you need to make a movie. And here, I'm gonna save you some time right now. Here's producing 101. These are the things you need to make a movie. Okay, so first you're gonna want permission, you're gonna need a location, you're gonna need somewhere to shoot it, you're gonna need a script, you're gonna need something to shoot, you're gonna need actors, you're gonna need the people in the movie, you're gonna need those people. You're gonna need a couple people to help you out with equipment, or you need a camera, which is your phone, first off. You don't need a fancy camera, you just need your phone to shoot stuff. Start shooting anything, and um, you need some editing systems, right? You have your phone, you can have free editing software on your phone. Also, you need a little bit of time, so like set out a weekend, and you need food to feed the people that are gonna be in your movie and help you make the thing. You need food. And oh yeah, don't forget bathrooms. You always need bathrooms. I forgot bathrooms. Bathrooms are very important. You always need access to a bathroom. And with each project that you do, each thing that you produce, each thing, each small thing, each small step, you're gonna get better and better and better and better and better, and that's how you get to the bigger projects, and that's when you're gonna be my boss one day. If you want a step-by-step -step guide on how to produce, there's tons of books out there, producing, filmmaking, there is a really good book about producing low-budget indie projects. I will leave the link below. Here's the book, there it is. Definitely look into it if you're trying to be a producer and you're not trying to spend a lot of money. I think this book is like $35 and I think it's well worth the investment if you're trying to, you know, get your ducks in a row to be a producer and you're not trying to go to film school for like 60,000 a year. All right, so we got the writer down, we got the producing down. Now we have to talk about directing. Don't know how to direct? Get your script, start shooting it, start shooting it on your phone. Just start making those small projects. With each small project that you direct, you are going to start to develop a style, okay? So those small little micro short films, then your 10 minute films, then your half hour little pilots, and then your big features, it's gonna lead those little small ones lead to the big ones, which are gonna be your great ones. You wanna make all your mistakes with your short films that you don't wanna make when it starts getting to bigger money and larger crews and stuff like that. So definitely start small, start with your own camera, start by yourself. You can make a movie all by yourself with your phone. Another cool way to learn about directing is to watch movies with the director's commentary on. It is probably the most fun you're gonna have in a while. It's, it's gonna be great. Watching movies with director commentary, you learned so much about what the director was thinking, how much was like, you know, they planned, how much was just by accident or whatever. Director's commentary for a movie, perfect. Also, read books from your favorite directors. They have memoirs, they have their play-by-play, -play, they have their things that they've written. Read those books. And also, watch movies. Just watch all the movies. Watch old movies, watch classics, watch horrible movies, watch good movies. Don't watch just the blockbuster movies that are out now. Don't just watch Marvel movies. Watch all types of stuff. All types of genres and all types of ages, like watch movies from the 30s, from the 40s, the 50s, 60s, watch movies from the last decade, like you'll see certain styles pop up, certain director styles, and and also if it's it's really cool if you watch movies from the same director. Like if you watch, let's just take Christopher Nolan, if you watch Memento, then Inception, and then Dark Knight, and then Tenet, you're gonna see his style change, and you're gonna see the types of things that he kind of does throughout his style. Okay, this is probably cost involved, but this is also really good for directors. Take acting classes, take an improv class, go to an improv group, go to a public speaking class or a public speaking group. Those things will help you with directing actors because ultimately your director, you say yes or no and you, you decide on certain color palettes and certain things that are gonna happen camera wise, but you're also going to be dealing with actors and a lot of people forget about the performance of the actors and that's probably, if not the most important, important element of, an, of a director is your relationship with the actor and how you can get the performance where you want it to be. 
So acting classes, improv classes, public speaking, I think will be very, very useful to you if you're trying to be a director. There are so many things that you can do to self-teach you how to be a filmmaker, how to be a producer, maybe a writer or a director or a director of photography or even an AD or whatever. There's so many things out there on, on YouTube. There's so many like master classes that are so much cheaper, probably take less time and that you can utilize that does not involve film school. For me, the ultimate film school is actually getting on set and watching the per professionals do it, getting there on set and watching them do it. Just being there to observe all the, the, how all the departments interact with each other. It's magical when you're first starting out and you're like, whoa, now they step in and they do this and they step in and do this. And why did they decide that? Ultimate film school is actually getting on a professional set and just watching it happen. Now, if you're worried about being a self-taught filmmaker, please do not worry. I don't want anyone to worry about, oh, but if I didn't go to film school, no one's gonna take me seriously. Now, there are so many directors out there that did not go to film school. And let's, let's read off the list. Keenan Iron Wayans, Christopher Nolan, Stanley Kubrick, Steven Spielberg, Quentin Torrentino, The Powerhouse, that is Ava DuVernay, The Wachowskis, Ethan Cohen, Wes Anderson, Wes Craven, Tim Burton, David Fincher, Julie Taymor. There's so many, it's ridiculous. If you're trying to be a director, showrunner, producer, all these people have made it and they didn't go to film school. And those are just the famous people. You understand where I fall with Film school, do you need it? I say no, but there are some folks who are like, yeah, I do wanna to go to film school. I wanna to go to film school. Okay, you wanna to go to film school. Let's do a pros and cons list. Now let's go over the pros. There's a chance for networking. Hopefully you have really good instructors and they can be your mentors. You'll leave a certain content or a movie or maybe a pilot on your reel. There's a certain clout or prestige when it comes to saying, hey, I graduated from Columbia or I graduated from like NYU. There's a certain prestige that you get to say that, yes, I did this, I got in and I've gotten out and now I'm hot shit. There's a certain structure that's given which really helps a lot of people out. And and hopefully you'll leave with a great experience where you learned a lot. Now, let's talk about the cons. Uh, the number one thing is time. It takes two or three years after you've already done a four year school. So for me, time's a huge one. Also the expense, that's probably, should have been the number one thing, was how expensive film schools can be. There's also the chance that you have film professors that have never stepped foot on a film set. I kid you not, I am not joking. This does happen and it's infuriating. I'm putting this on the cons list as well, the structure. Now the structure, it could be too structured. And and that might bother a bunch of people because you are required to take certain classes that you may not want to take and you are under certain deadlines that are probably sometimes ridiculous. So the structure is also a con. This kind of is a reactionary thing after you go to film school, but people on film sets, professional film sets, don't care that you went to film school. When you step on a film set, you're still gonna start as a set PA, most likely. 95% of the time you graduate from film school, you're gonna start like everyone else as a PA somewhere. I think this is also a con because this is also a after the fact type thing from film school, but taking your safe space experience of film school and trying to make it into or translate that into real world making a living in the film industry is very hard for some people. And they, it's some people can't connect the two and they don't end up working in the film industry. And probably the ultimate con is that you are not guaranteed a job. You're not guaranteed a job. There certainly is a lot to think about when it comes to the pros and cons list. And there's probably a lot more that other people can think of, but those are the ones on my list. Trying to get into the film industry is tough. Going to film school can show you how to make a movie, but it doesn't quite guide you into how to get into the film industry. Some people are gonna say it's a waste of time and money, and some people are gonna say it's the best thing they ever did. But I think the ultimate goal for a lot of people that go to film school is to tell good stories, tell their stories and bring their dreams and visions to the world. And I can say that you don't need film school to do that. Is film school worth it to me at this point in time in my life? No, 
hard no, it's, it's not something I want to do with my life right now. <laughs> uh, if I were to think back to 20 year old me, I think affordability would be my thing that would really hold me back. If you're at the point in this video where you're like, I still want to go to film school, but I can't afford it. <laughs> what I will say is that there are affordable film schools out there. Um, not all schools have to be the super famous schools that are, you know, such and such famous director went to or so and so won an Oscar. Outside of film schools, you can take workshops, you can take courses outside of actual traditional schooling, like you can sign up for a course that a school is offering, but you don't have to take a whole degree program. Um, conservatorships that usually are one or two years. Um, I know this is, those are really big with like acting programs. But there are so many different things you can do to hone your skills and get the experience you need without actually going to a film school. And if you haven't started school yet and you're thinking about your undergrad, you can go to school, take whatever major you want, but then you could take a few film classes. You can gain certain skills and not have to give up all your schooling and money and time and dedicate it all to filmmaking. Because I, I really believe that a lot of the best filmmakers have majored in other things and done other things with their life and they didn't revolve their whole life around filmmaking and, and revolve their all of their schooling around filmmaking. If you choose to apply to film school, I support you. I want you to know that I'm rooting for you. If you want to go to film school and you apply, you do it. I'm first of all looking to scholarships because Lord knows I don't want anyone to be in debt. I don't want anyone to be stressed after leaving a film school. Know that I support you, but wh whatever happens, whatever film school you choose, please do not choose a film school based solely on whatever famous director went to that school because the film school wants you to think that you know they are successful because they went to that school. It's only a fraction of their success. It's only part of the story and I know a lot of film schools have really good marketing and they like to tell you that oh this director went here and because of this they went and did this just don't fall for that just make sure you're making thoughtful decisions when it comes to whatever school you want to go to so choose wisely and do what feels right for you and go for it so that is it for now. I hope this video has helped you decide whether or not film school is for you, whether or not you need it. I hope this was useful in helping you decide, but we know that you do not need it. I support you. You can do it on your own. You can self-teach. Maybe you need some structure. Maybe you want to go to film school, but you don't have to go to those crazy big famous film schools. I totally believe in that. I totally believe in you and what you want to do. Um, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please comment below. If you have any really long questions, you you can always email me. You can hit me up on my website, beyondfilmschool.com. You can support Beyond Film School by buying some merch. You can hit me up on Facebook or Instagram at Beyond Film School. And that is it for now. I shall see you next time.